a simple evening scene. Our character sits up on the couch. It's blue hour outside, and he's being lit by the house lamp in the room. Actually, this scene wasn't lit by the house lamp, but by bouncing light from a sheet of bleached muslin material, linking the light on our character to the light coming from the lamp. The light was set to the same colour temperature as the lamp, matching it. This is what we call motivated lighting, and we use it to extend or enhance natural or practical light in the scene. In this case, the lamp, which by itself wasn't lighting our subject. But what has this setup got to do with powerful lighting? Right now, we're shooting with six stops of ND, or neutral density, to reduce our exposure. If we take these filters away, one by one, we can understand why we needed them. It's very bright in this room. This is partly because of the output of our light, the Nanlux Evoke 1200B, which is a high output lighting fixture with bicolour functionality. It has roughly the equivalent output to two industry standard lighting fixtures, but with the lower power draw of LED and the ability to change colour temperature from 2700 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin. But what does this light output look like in practice? Well, you've just seen it. Our room is so bright right now because of the 1200B and its 26 degree reflector dish bouncing from the muslin material. Switched off, you can see how much output we've just lost inside the room, but we still have some pretty bright daylight outside and we wanted to shoot for an evening scene. So let's put our two, four, six stops of ND back on. In doing this, we've reduced a lot of light to the point that the natural light outside the window actually looks like evening sky. Now we can see exactly how we've utilised this light output. Even though we've reduced a lot of the exposure in the image, the 1200B was powerful enough to cut through and give us a good exposure on our subject. This is a good demonstration of the Evoke's output but you may not be using it in close quarters like this when recording audio, since it needs to keep cool using its fan system. What you will find with a powerful bicolour fixture like this is that it's a workhorse of a light. Its output and flexibility allowing you to light for a variety of situations and scenarios. Here, we use the 1200B up high, 26 degree reflector attached, imitating the nearby street light, but directed into the position we wanted it at the power we needed it. In reality, it was actually a little earlier on in the day than implied in the scene, but like in our previous setup, we shot at full power and reduced our exposure overall, making it look more like late evening. And you might have noticed something else here. It's raining. Both the light fixture and power supply of the 1200B are IP54 rated, which means you're able to shoot in different weather conditions without damaging the light due to this water resistant ceiling. We allowed the bounce light from the grass below to fill in our character's face, making for a more realistic interpretation of the way our street light would be interacting with the environment in this situation. A light with a more powerful output will allow you to work with diffusion in situations where a less powerful light wouldn't provide enough exposure. We didn't actually have any sun hitting our scene here. Instead, we used lights. One harder light to represent the sun, and one softer light to represent the sun bouncing from a surface off camera. For the sun backlight, we had a Nanlite Forza 720B set to around 3200 Kelvin, for now lens attached, firing through the back window of the car. For the key light on our subject, we had our Nanlux Evoke 1200B, set to around 3400 Kelvin, with its 150cm octobox, firing in through the side windows of the car. When we diffuse light, either by shooting it through material or bouncing it, we lose some of its output or brightness. 
which is why it's important to have enough power to offset this loss of light, and still have enough flexibility to light our scene how we want it. You can see how we were once again able to balance our ambient levels lower with the power of our lights, creating the contrast ratios between light and dark that we wanted in the scene. And even with the 1200B shooting through diffusion, losing some of its output, this was easily achieved, as we had enough power to start with. Maintaining a consistency to your light levels when shooting against daylight is an important element in making your shots flow together and feel congruent. What could be passed off as simple natural light from the window was actually, once again, our own lighting. We lit this by placing a 6x6 frame of bleached muslin just above the window outdoors, and firing our 1200B 60 degree reflector dish attached into it, set to 6500 Kelvin, to better match the overcast daylight. We actually had part of the frame in shot, but combined with the shallow depth of field, window, and background, it blended nicely into the scene. However, with our lighting turned off, we can see the natural light from outdoors was making for a very similar light to our own, so why didn't we just bring the exposure up? Shooting this using just the natural light from the cloudy sky would have introduced changing light levels to our scene. It was raining on and off, which meant the sky was periodically getting darker, then brighter. By toning down this natural light and enhancing it with our own, we now have a constant level in our room and on our subject, with changes to the ambient light outside the window becoming much less noticeable. This means we can shoot multiple takes over a period of time without needing to change camera settings or lighting to keep things consistent. The same goes for the close-up. We could move in and shoot this without needing to adjust anything but our focal length. A less powerful light wouldn't allow us to overpower the ambient to the same extent, and we would struggle to maintain consistency to our lighting throughout a shoot, as we've done here. Recreating sunlight on a bigger set is usually a job for very large, very bright, very expensive lighting units. However, on a smaller production, a powerful fixture like the 1200B can easily be used to light larger interiors, or even exteriors if you plan accordingly. The sunset you can see lighting the walking shots is actually our 1200B. The real sun is over here somewhere, blocked by the trees. By scoping out the location beforehand and finding a good vantage point to place our light, we were able to shape this hard sunlight onto the scene where we wanted it, without relying on the sun itself. Using the compatible Nanlux FL35 Fresnel lens, we were able to focus our light into a beam, projecting it over a greater distance. This not only means we have more reach, but from point A to point B, the level of light on our subject and background stays consistent, as we can be much further away from the light. You can also see our natural skylight was still quite bright, yet our 1200B was able to compete with it, allowing us to create a realistic light and colour contrast in our scene between sunset and sky, with the Evoke set to 3600 Kelvin, and our sky around 6000 to 8000 Kelvin. We moved back along the path slightly for the wide shot, placing our light directly in frame, disguised in its overexposure, emulating the sun. We shot this as the real sun was setting behind the clouds, which meant we had a little less natural skylight at this point, creating a more contrasty image. We also used the 1200B and Fresnel lens to light the shots of our subject in the kitchen, opening the duffel bag. It was actually a rainy day outside, and we had our light and Fresnel lens at the end of the garden. Our Fresnel set to a wider beam angle to cover most of the ground floor through the windows. This meant we had maximum coverage in our scene and could light more realistically, with the 1200B providing our main sunlight in the kitchen and through the bathroom window, making for a splash of sunlight on the door in the background. Since we wanted more of an overall warmth to this scene, 
we set our light to 6500 Kelvin to more closely match the natural ambient, then pushed our camera's white balance to 7600 Kelvin, warming up the sky, shadows and highlights more evenly. A little haze was added to the scene to create a slightly lower contrast and a subtle beam of light from the window. For the final close-up, we again shot directly into the light source, adding in a Nanlite 720B through diffusion just to sculpt the light on the face slightly, and a little negative fill to take down some of the bounce from the wall. The tools we use to light an image influence how we present visual information, and a more powerful light gives us greater flexibility to create images exactly the way we want them to look. Support my channel on Patreon and get ad-free extended YouTube videos, along with extra breakdowns and previews of upcoming videos. Watch parts 1, 2, 4 and 5 of my Lighting with Colour mini course here on YouTube right now. But if you want an exclusive part 3, no ads and downloadable files, head over to my website or become a patron and stream the 46 minute tutorial. I colour grade my work using Dehancer. Use my code ROBELLIS to get 10% off. I use music from AudioSocket in my videos. Click my referral link in the video description and use the code ROBELLIS when you sign up for a free month of the best and most diverse range of stock music available. Use my code ROBELLIS over at Zyro to get up to 81% off your website or storefront, plus three extra months free along with a custom domain for a year.